This is Banjo, and today I'm demonstrating the newly added mobile ground crew feature for the AJS-37 Vigan found in DCS World. Having a look at the forum post by Ragnarda, we could see a bit of information about the newly added feature, and we could also see how to place it in the editor and use it in the game. One thing to bear in mind about the system is that it is very much work in progress. I'll leave a link to the thread in the video description so you can read the forum post for yourself, and now we'll jump right into the editor, demonstrate the setup, and then jump in game to show how it's used. In the editor, we're able to see that I have a single Vigan set up on a single turning point over a road. We can see below that we have three ground units. Looking at this group, we can see the first one, which the unit type doesn't matter, but the unit name for the first one must be ground crew. We're able to see it is unit one of three, indicating that it's a leader. We can see unit 2 is the transport M818, and unit 3 is the tanker Hemet. I've placed the units just off the side of the road, well within reach if I taxi up to them, and I've given myself about 1.5 miles of useful road to land on. I'll leave the on-road landing in the example, but if you want to skip ahead to when I access the ground crew, just jump ahead about a minute. Now landing on a road doesn't really differ from landing on a runway. It's narrower, for one thing and it might be shorter depending on the road. You're not going to have any radio beacons for radio navigation purposes, and you're not going to have TILS beacons. But otherwise, it's the same. As I have 1.5 nautical miles of useful runway on this road, I'm going to engage the thrust reverser, but only power up the throttle about one half power, which will slowly reduce my speed, but allow me to continue rolling as I still got a ways to taxi over to those vehicles to rearm. With speed reduced, I'll pull the handle for the thrust reverser and continue rolling on low throttle, being careful not to roll too fast as roads can be bumpy in DCS and you might damage your landing gear. Now that I've taxied over to the vehicle group, I should be within range to access the ground crew options. So I'll park my aircraft and open the kneeboard, and I'll flip through the pages until I access the ground crew page. If you're unfamiliar with the controls for the kneeboard, it's right shift K to bring it up, and left and right square brackets to flip pages. So I'll flip through the pages until I find ground crew, and we can see mobile ground crew on the latter half of the page. We can see the controls for altering each selection. For changing loadout, it's left alt, left control L, and we can see this now as I cycle through the available loadout options. As we can see, we only have preset loadouts, so you can't configure a specific custom loadout, so be sure to remember this. Next we have Fuel, and we can alter this with left alt, left control F, between a series of set values. And finally we have Relocation, currently set to stay in place, although as we change it with left alt, left control R, we can see that it will relocate to our current L1 waypoint, listing an approximate time to relocation. At this point, to confirm, I can press left alt, left control enter, and we will see the progress begin from 0 to 100%. As I glance over the fuel quantities gauge, we can see it's slowly increasing, well, actually rather quickly increasing, up to 75%. As we switch over to external view, we can see as bombs are loaded onto the aircraft as it receives its preset loadout. And finally, once progress has reached 100%, the rearming and refueling is complete, we can close the kneeboard and taxi out. In this case, I have purposely given myself only one way, which was the way I landed, as there's a city in my way up ahead, to demonstrate the fact that a two-lane road with use of the thrust reverser will allow you to make like a three-point turn to get out back the way you came in. So at this point I can complete the turn, get aligned on center line, and take off. One thing to remember though about taking off from a road is it is bumpier. Where normally you take off on stage 2 afterburner, on a road it tends to be safer to use stage 3, get more thrust allowing you to lift off sooner. Though this will naturally depend on your selected loadout. And with that we have the mobile ground crew feature. Be sure to report any bugs on the forum post that I'll link in the video description as I'm sure the guys at Heatbler would appreciate them. <laughs>